Essex Horse and Pony Protection Society, which is situated at Watt Tyler Way, Pitsy, has for the last 15 years depended almost entirely on public donations. Its 60 or so residents have nearly all suffered from some form of cruelty or neglect. Were it not for the dedication and compassion shown by both staff and visitors alike, these animals would still be fighting for survival. Brenda Wilkes, founder of the sanctuary, describes some of the efforts made to continue this good work. Brenda takes up the story. Um, I used to work in a woodyard, and yeah. my office window overlooked Vanished Marshes. And there's lots of horses out there grazing, and it was quite idyllic in the summer. But the winter time, there was far too many horses for the amount of ground there. Um, horses were getting stuck into ditches, um, horse boxes were coming up, and these were gypsy horse boxes or travellers. They were cramming the horses in. And basically, you could see the suffering of the animals now. And really, that's how it all started from really being in one area and watching everything that went on. Um, we first started off where there was a couple of gypsy ponies tethered up. Um, they asked me to actually take them. They had to get off the land. Um, one of the little gypsy mares had had the foal on a pavement outside a telephone box. So I ended up knowing nothing about horses, having one mare, one foal and one yearling. And that's how it all started about 15 years ago. We rented stables out. We had 15 stables and 15 acres of land. We got too big for the 15 stables. We knew this particular place at what time sanctuary where we are now was actually coming up and they offered us the lease. And that's how it all started down here. We've been here about six years. When we first came here, it was a derelict site. There was nothing here, no water, electricity, no stable facility. All we had was one barn where they used to have um, car breakers. Um, we looked at it and thought, you know, perhaps we could do something with it. And we started from there. A lot of hard work. Our volunteers worked around the clock. We also had DIY stables going. We had to get this place ready. And we moved in with 15 horses about six years ago. But everything here, we had to do ourselves. And that's everything. We had no gates, no fences, nothing. So it really started from then. And since we've been here, naturally we've got bigger. And I think we can boast about 65 permanent residents at the moment. Um, we used to do a little bit of fundraising, but you can imagine there's only a few of us and we wasn't really that good at doing it. I can remember um, paying the vet bills out of our own pocket and the electric light and everything else and then gradually we got bigger. So a lot of it really was from a few of our members we had, everyone dipped in their pockets. And also our own fundraising, but that was in the early days. Um, naturally you cannot go on if you haven't got money. We had to find stables, so any money we did get, it always does go straight to the animals. Last year we got through £75,000. The majority of that went on veterinary bills, feed bills for the animals, and expenses directly towards the animals. You're talking about hay, you're talking about straw, you're talking about bedding, wood chips, and then you're talking about maintenance. Um, there's a horse box that we run that has got to be maintained, then we have electric light, normal kind of bills that everyone has, we have a little bit more. If you imagine here, we have so much lighting. It's main 24 hours a day, but every penny goes to the animal in the society. It doesn't go to anywhere else. And just a small bit on actual publication, like newsletters and things like that. But um, 75,000 pounds, a lot of money to find. We have eight full-time staff here, one YTS staff, and the rest basically are volunteer, volunteer workers. The ages range from our youngster who is 16, our YTS student, and then it starts from 19 to 54. So you can see there's a quite a, a difference in the age there. But I would say most people here are the age of 25, our four-time helpers. Then we come to weekends and we've got lots of young girls. They have to be over 13. Bless their hearts, they've been, they did nothing out at all. They don't ride the animals. And it's sheer hard work. These young girls give up their spare time to come and care for the animals here. And then it's all the dirty jobs, like mucking out. They get some good jobs, like grooming. That's when all the dirty jobs are done. But really, they really do work hard. And all our staff here, it's for the love of the animal, more than anything else. The best way that anyone can help the society is naturally being a member, and that's joining the society. 
their membership means a lot to us because it's their charity as well as anyone else's here. But fundraising, coming down at weekends, adopting a pony, being a member, lots of things. But believe me, every little helps.